Uh, I must first begin by thanking Pramod Joshi, Anup Gupta and the organizing team for having me here. It's been a pleasure here, being here, and I kind of missed the earlier talks and where I began from, said reading not only between the lines but between the numbers. I was paying attention not only to the talks but between the talks. Pramod Joshi talked about listening carefully and there was a very nice presentation on solar energy, on entrepreneurship and so on. And I'm really uh, very much better for having listened to that. Time is limited over there and therefore I get directly to the thoughts that I wanted to share. I don't use PowerPoint because I believe power corrupts the politician and PowerPoint corrupts the academic. So I don't use PowerPoint. I just, so the theme that I have is about education and to make it more precise it is education for the fourth industrial age. And this tells you what it is all going to be about. We all know education, you are sitting here going through the agonies of getting educated. And we generally believe that an educated person is better than a non-educated person and a well-educated person is better than a not so well-educated person. The issues before us, in fact, these are issues facing the whole world. This is one thing on which developing and developed countries are on the same page. Something new is happening. And when we talk about the future, the future is now very, very different from the past. And any linear extension is not even possible. You can call that there's a discontinuity or some people call it a phase change. And the phrase for that is the fourth industrial age. We talked about education in many ways, education for all, for women and so on. But so far education was a good thing to have. Tomorrow it is critical. Eric Hanushek is a professor at Stanford University. He wrote a book 2015 on the knowledge capital of nations. You must have heard of Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations. And he tried to correlate with very serious data, Stanford professors are very rigorous, that the Atomic development of any nation today is directly correlated with its knowledge capital, state of the education system, and so on. And we kind of broadly know that. This is going to get even more fundamentally important. Our Bharat Ratna in Science, CNR Rao, said before the Rashtrapati in Rashtrapati Bhavan that 90% of our universities have outdated curriculum. Nobody has challenged it. The Department of Science and Technology has created a report, Vision India 2035, where it says schools, colleges and universities as exist will become redundant by 2035. We're talking of what is going to happen. And this is being called the fourth industrial age by, it was in fact January 2016 at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Professor Klaus Schwab, who was the founder of the World Economic Forum, drew attention to this that we are at the threshold of the fourth industrial revolution. And this is what I want to share with you. In very simple terms, there was a pre-industrial society when we talk about great glory of India. In the pre-industrial age, the only source of energy was manual power. Or muscular power, if I say, because muscular power was also in the animals and was in the human beings. So who were the rich people? The rich people were those who had lots of cattle, camels, elephants, whatever, and lots of slaves, minions, paid servants, unpaid servants, there is also bonded labor, whatever you had, that was the source of energy. And that's why about 200, 300 years ago, India and China were the richest countries in the world. If you take the GDP over the last 300 years, you'll find there was a time when India and China, because that was the big source of energy. Things changed around 1780 when steam got understood. And you had steam as a source of power and therefore you had steam engines for locomotion and boilers in factories for large scale manufacturing and the industrial age arrived. It continued merrily for about a hundred years when Thomas Edison invented the electric bulb. And Thomas Edison was a bit of a nuisance because he was not happy just inventing the electric bulb. And I'm saying this because many of you want to be entrepreneurs. He said, how will the electric bulb light up? So electricity has to be organized. Electricity has to be transmitted. Electricity has to be generated. 
And Thomas Edison is the one who set up General Electric. We know more about Jack Welch because he is a management guru, but it is Thomas Edison who did the whole thing. So understanding an ecosystem is very much important than just comparing and looking at a product. But something else happened. Till that time, oil companies were merely going along with selling what is called kerosene. And kerosene in England was called lamp oil and the rest of the world is called kerosene. It was mainly used for lighting up. So all street lights, domestic lights, everything was kerosene. With electricity coming, the oil companies were under pressure. So they developed petrol devices, diesel devices, petrol engine, diesel engine. And now you see you have petrol engines, you have diesel engines, you have electric motors, you have electric. You have the great second industrial revolution from about 1870 to 1960s or so. Around 1960s, so-called automation was basically electromagnetic devices, the self in cars, anything where you put electric bell. So you did electromagnetic circuit breaking and that was the level of automation that you had. Around 1970s, electronics started taking shape. So from your vacuum tube, diode, triode, ICs, radio, television, etc. And this became the third industrial revolution. Why I'm emphasizing that is that the best that we have seen of our country, the IITs and many other engineering colleges were made in the image of the IITs, benefited from the third industrial revolution. It isn't that they were doing anything great, it's just a question of right timing. IITs were created in 1960, their first students came around 1966, they were the first people to have access to computers, to large libraries, to some equipment with the rest of the world did it have, and therefore they were ready for the third industrial revolution. What Professor Klaus Schwab says is that we are now entering the fourth industrial revolution, which is not just an extension of the third industrial revolution, but is a convergence and fusion of three things which were separate. So if you remember, even today you see it, and we saw it before our eyes, there was the physical world or the real world, and there was this computer department, computer center, director of computing, and so on. Today, they have got very much merged. The mobile phone you are all carrying is as powerful a computer, in fact, more powerful than the most powerful computer we had till the 1980s or 1990s. Added to this is the third element, which was completely apart, which was the biological world. So what we are talking about the future is the convergence and fusion of the physical world of atoms and energy, the information world of bits and qubits, qubits are used in quantum computing, and the biological world of genes and neurons. This is the future for which we have to get ready. And therefore, completely different things are required. Specialization is no longer important. The third industrial revolution is specialized engineering, chemical, electrical engineering, electronics, etc. Today we are talking of a thing of generalization, where from the atom, energy, bit, qubit, neuron, gene, you should be able to comprehend everything. And that is what the future is about. I can give you all kinds of new technologies which are coming up. But the key technologies which will affect all of us, just like computers affect all of us. You need not be a computer scientist or a computer programmer to be affected by computing. Some of the technologies will affect everybody are, one is big data. Big data basically means that you have large amounts of data to deal with. It's typically characterized by various variety, velocity, volume, etc., etc. The other one, which you will hear more and more if you haven't heard so far, is something called blockchain. Has anybody heard of blockchain? Right, good. So you will hear more and more about this, just like PC started coming in and everybody has heard of Excel today, you will start hearing of blockchain or everybody has heard of database today. Everybody talks about that. Blockchain is the new kid on the block which is as fundamental as the internet itself. So if TCP IP is a protocol which is fundamental to the internet, blockchain is an open ledger system. See, so far we say Trust comes only from authority. So there is a bank or a UGC or an AICT or SEBI or something which gives you trust. Blockchain is a model where there is open and trust comes because of community efforts and very high mathematics for cryptography so that every record is kept basically as a hash function and as you add records you have more hash functions and this is available on any computer somewhat like Wikipedia. And there are people who will verify that. So there are a lot of opportunities. First, if you want to be an employee, you will become a blockchain 
analyst, miner, validator, etc. If you are an entrepreneur, you will create a whole new system on blockchain. The third very important thing that is happening is artificial intelligence, machine intelligence, deep learning. Everything that you heard 10 years ago of computerization, you will hear of machine learning for that. So whatever is happening with artificial intelligence and machine learning. The most famous tool in this has been IBM Watson, but Google has something called TensorFlow, Microsoft, all the leading players. In fact, Google says it will no longer be a search company, it will be an AI company. And when you do Google search, etc., you see this kind of, when you look at the ads that are being thrown at you, you look at it. And then, of course, there is robotics, drones, and augmented reality and virtual reality. So these are some five technologies which will affect you in every way. You may either become a technology specialist or a technology user or a manager or an investor. Today there is no re the AI. In fact, the biggest news on AI is a couple of days ago, Qualcomm, which is the famous chip manufacturing company, has bought MCX to become a big thing which will make the AI on a chip which means your mobile phone will have AI capability, which is there in, let's say, IBM Watson or this or that and so on. What it means in terms of skills for learning becomes very different. The traditional education system will become irrelevant because what you do in a traditional education system is that you say what is in the book without looking at the book. People of Bihar don't like it, but most of us accept that the exam is about saying what is in the book. That is no longer important because the book is available to you all the time. On your mobile device, every piece of knowledge which is available to anybody is available. You don't really know. What you do with that becomes important. So the key skills that become important are complex problem solving. You notice today the failure. We are not able to take care of climate change. We are not able to take care of pollution control. We are not able to take care of social issues because they're all complex. They're not one at a time. You simply can't say, I will change car to odd even, it will get solved. It doesn't get solved. I will not say dust, it doesn't get solved. These are all complex things and therefore that has become the big number. The number two is creative thinking. The third is critical thinking and actually it's this combination of this, which is the iteration. You will find a creative solution, then critically analyze it for appropriateness and keep on iterating. So these three become very important. Then of course persuasion, negotiation, these skills become important. So how would we learn all these? IITs were not designed for but became the right fit for the third industrial age. There is no institution which is right now ready fit for the fourth industrial age but every one of us has a possibility of orienting ourselves to the fourth industrial age. The key players in any such thing are basically three things. Governments, businesses and individuals. And this is where the good news is. So government should create new institutions if they were willing to listen. The places for what is called a MOOCs university. All of you know, have heard of MOOCs? Right. So we need MOOCs university, which means that the learning is transferred to the MOOCs, but somebody has to validate that you really know it. It's not enough to say, I am doing course from Coursera. Have you learned anything? You may have done the course. So therefore, university's job will be to assess and certify identity management, proctored examinations, and so on. So just like 1985, this country made progress in terms of creating Indira Gandhi Open University, which was a new way of learning. There is time for creating a MOOCs university. This can be done by the central government or by any enlightened state government. If Akhilesh Yadav could understand it, he could say that this is what I will do. And every class 12 college can become a center of such a thing. But forget that. If the government does it well and good, if it doesn't. The second option is for private initiative to create. And since private initiatives cannot create a university, they will create something else and I have a very nice name for it. I call it a mobile learning diversity. So it is the idea that whatever the university doesn't teach you, I learn from the diversity. And why do I call it a diversity? Because it has a diversity of learners, it has a diversity of subjects, it has a diversity of teachers. I don't need a PhD in something, something to teach. I won't get it. I want... How did this country learn to use the mobile phone? Was there any, see the IAS people missed a big opportunity. They could have had a director general of mobile phone training, additional director general of directorate of mobile phone training. All that opportunity was lost because we learned it ourselves. How did we learn it? The one who knew told the one who didn't know. So why can't we do that for machine learning? 
Why can't we get our big data? Why can't we do that for anything? People who know can do this and collectively we can create that. The third thing is the individuals. Individuals are very important. I am putting individuals in three categories. One is the teachers themselves. So you're talking about all kinds of things. I'm talking of a phrase, a word called teacherpreneur, where a teacher independent decides that I will not bother regulator part I'll do, but I'll do something beyond. If people need to learn something, I will teach it. The other important aspect is parents. Parents are very important and especially in the early formative years because now you're talking of completely new issue. You're talking of coming of age in the fourth industrial age. You're looking at children. The mother is the most important teacher. We talked about women's education. The home is the first school. The mother's lap is the first classroom and the mother is the most important teacher. And that is a very, very important aspect why women's education is so important. Finally, of course, the learner himself. The learner is very important because most of our learners today have become passive learners. I've seen so many people who have the whole book but will not read the last chapter because it has not been taught yet in class. You're carrying the book for 300 days but you won't read that because it has not been taught in class. I think we have to move to active, uber smart, self-directed learners who will learn by themselves. And this is again a very, very important aspect of moving on to the new kind of a thing. So we're saying here are new challenges, here are new opportunities, this is a new way of learning and absolutely there is no question that there will be a large number of people who will be left behind but it's an open game. So people like the World Economic Forum have been doing this study and you will be surprised. Countries like China and South Korea are in extreme danger of being affected adversely by the fourth industrial revolution and not being prepared for that. We, with our slightly open jugadu, open-ended kind of a thing, not rigid thing, not obeying people, have an opportunity of a set of people coming out. We saw that in the third industrial age where companies like, you know, Infosys and Wipro and so many things came out. They were not designed that way, but they came out of the sort of, uh, what should you say, a kind of a month agitation. This is the kind of a future that you have. And all of you have this opportunity, all the sources of learning, you need to be motivated, you need to get mentored. And since I have a minute left, I, just like Pramod Joshi has created this 20 thing, I created once upon a time 55 words of inspiration. And this 55 words was not his, he had this equality, 10 phrases to, I had a different thing. I said, if this is my last opportunity to talk to young people, and I have only 10 words allowed, what would I say? If I had only 9 words allowed, what would I say? If I had only 8 words allowed, what would I say? And together, if you know your arithmetic progression, it becomes 10 into 10 plus 1 upon 2, 55 words. So I have this set of 55 words of inspiration. I don't quite remember, but I can say that, that if I had 10 words, I would say, arise, awake, and stop not till the goal is reached. A quotation by Vivekanand. If I had 9 words, I would say, let noble thoughts come to me from all directions. It is from the Rig Veda. If I had 8 words, I would say, the harder I work, the luckier I get. Let's come down to the fast few. If I had only 3 words, I would say, atla chalore. If nobody else understands you, if I have only two words of advice to give you, I will say just shine. So he gave you 20 words, add the two words, just shine, that's all. And just shine, if you think deeply, is the motto of the sun. That is all the sun does. And the entire planet, solar system, everything is working on one simple philosophy which the sun has, just shine. And if I had only one word to send you by way of advice, what would that be? It is Excel. Not Microsoft Excel, but pursuit of excellence and Excel. So, all the best. Thank you.